TikTok is creative, expressive, funny. So. <laughs> Raw, entertaining, and fierce. Uh-huh. With over a billion users worldwide, TikTok is the latest craze in entertainment. It lets me be free. It allows me to speak without getting interrupted. It's nonstop creativity and expression, delivered right to the vital For You page, a page curated for each user based on their interests, calculated by their likes, views, and shares. It's designed to reach people of any age, any background, any ethnicity. It gives everyone a chance to be discovered. And of course, there are the viral dances. In early 2020, it was The Renegade. Set to the song Lottery by K-Camp, millions of people were doing The Renegade Challenge, including celebrities like Lizzo and A-Rod. But at the time, no one was crediting the dance's creator, Jalea Harmon, then just 14 years old. Do you want to teach her a little of The Renegade? If you want to. Like I hit uh, the lottery, like a dice roll. The Atlanta-based teen has been dancing since she was three, and it shows. What'd you just do with your foot? Jalea originally posted the dance to Instagram, but it wasn't until someone else did her dance on TikTok that it went viral. What was that like for you? I was really, you know, I was happy that people were doing it, but I was kind of frustrated at the same time because they weren't really giving me my credit. If I saw somebody do the dance, I would go on in their comments and say, hey, this is my dance, this is my dance, but nobody would believe me. The Renegade is synonymous with TikTok. I think it is the most viral dance I've ever seen in my career. It took a profile and the New York Times for Jalea to claim her title as the Renegade creator. I mean, in a lot of ways, your life changed overnight. Yes. <laughs> That weekend, I went to Chicago for the um, NBA All-Star Game. And then I had to do Ellen. Since then, the team has turned that clout into partnerships with brands like Samsung, the Scoob Movie, and even Prada. These are huge endorsement deals on the line, a viral trend or something on TikTok. It can be millions of dollars. There's a saying out there, if they love black people as much as they love black culture, and it's because the appropriation of black art goes back centuries. But how did it feel for you being an example of this much bigger problem at such a young age? Yeah, it was pretty hard for me to wrap my mind around because like, I really don't like to see like black creators not getting the recognition that they need. This renegade challenge, it made me feel like, as a black content curator, that I can always have something taken away from me. I do think that black work is appreciated on TikTok, but only when it's being done by non-black people. There are so many black creators that experience this every single day. Things trickle up from black internet users and it becomes mainstream, but it's not just recognizing you know, oh, well, this originated in these places. It's giving those original creators a seat at the table and credit and also allowing them to enjoy the types of financial success that the people who sort of mainstream these ideas receive. We want to make sure that, you know, these creators get the recognition because it's it's, they deserve their flowers. As the director of creator community at TikTok, it's Kudzi Chukumbu's job to make sure its creators are seen and heard. We need to do a lot more work in understanding trend origination. How is TikTok making sure that these black creators are getting as much exposure to those opportunities as their white counterparts are? The key is to make sure that you're always finding and amplifying black voices and making sure that we are giving them all the tools to succeed in terms of their videos, but then like highlighting them on any of our channels that we have, whether that is newsletters or social media or anything that includes a brand campaign, because that's what these opportunities come from. They come from you being seen. For some of those voices, you know, if there's a, a black creator who speaks out about injustice or the everyday racism that they deal with, some advertisers may look at that as political and just a realm that they don't really want to tread into. How can TikTok help protect those black creators so that them speaking out about the racism they face, that their white counterparts don't face, isn't seen as something that's negative or a knock on them? It shouldn't be seen as negative. Counter speech is very much allowed. I think it's really on the advertisers or brands to think about who they're partnering with so that they're really thinking, is their brand talking about the world as it is today or some ideal world that they 
believe that these conversations are happening because they're happening and they're happening on TikTok. Hey, this is a message for all my black TikTokers. But even on TikTok, where creativity and authenticity thrive, some black creators you feel disadvantaged right from the start. I have 125,000 followers, but somebody needs to explain to me how it is that 354 views on this video. Am I the only one that has noticed that black creators get least favored by the algorithm? The algorithm is a reflection of users. So if users are not following and engaging with black creators as much because of systemic racism and other reasons, the algorithm is then gonna show that content to fewer and fewer people. There's also a lot of criticism about the algorithm. Some black creators feel like their work is still not seen as much as if they were maybe white. I believe that the creators um, want more transparency with the recommendation system. The For You feed is what we call it. TikTok doesn't collect race data, so that's not how one of the factors that goes into that. If there are white users on the platform who are only seeking out and seeing content by white creators, do you think that TikTok has an obligation to make sure that they're being offered and shown diverse videos? The recommendation system intersperses with videos from other creators or categories of content that you may not have seen before so that you continue to discover and see new voices and new perspectives. Unsatisfied with the algorithm, black creators demanded action. In response, TikTok created programs like their Black Trailblazers list and TikTok for Black Creatives incubator program. A lot of times growing up being black, navigating a career and a profession, we're told we have to work twice as hard to get half as much. And there are creators who absolutely feel that way. So when you say that TikTok will always amplify black voices, how do we get to the point where TikTok doesn't have to amplify black voices because they're amplified just as much as everybody else's? That is my dream state. My dream state is where we all live in a world where you are enough just as you are, right? But this is a industry wide, like this is like entertainment in general. So right now You're absolutely right we need that. to amplify. Right now you have to be like, who are the people? And we'll get to that place when that is the norm. Some creators aren't waiting for the platform to change and instead they're taking matters into their own hands. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Girl Magic Minute. I'm Taylor Cassidy, your host. I had kept seeing videos on my FYP, my free page about like black singers and black um, people trying to get their name out there. So I was like, what if I uplifted them? You know, what if I shed light on them, not only to, you know, give them their credit, but so that more people could go support them? You are beautiful! You are enough. Eleanor, assemble! 18-year-old Taylor Cassidy, one of TikTok's black trailblazers, is all about highlighting black women's work and spreading positivity to her over two million followers. Being the baddest has no one type. Go and make your own magic. I want to show people that, you know, Black people aren't a monolith. Whenever somebody comes to, you know, my videos, I want them to come seeking pride in themselves. Do you remember the Miss Fatty Challenge? It was made by the only I Am Bratty B. She didn't get credit for it, so let's give her her props. People of all races come to Black Girl Magic Minute because they want to learn how to support better and they want to learn how to respect black culture better. I see more and more TikTokers on the platform saying their truth. You know, one black person can't solve everything and can't give the answers to every single problem. It's up to an entire group of people to make that change. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. And remember, keep rising. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.